does this one, doesn't it, with that four minute wait as well. Yeah, and it really affects them too. I mean, they've got to sort of readjust their timing for everything. Yep. Coaches and athletes are sort of set them, you know, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. Then all of a sudden, hang on, I've got to change everything. Yeah. Like a 20 minute wait in between squats. Yeah, it's a long way around. Trying to keep the body warm, trying yep. to keep everything. Trying to keep your mind in the right yeah, position keep, as well. Yeah, it's, it's the mental, mental, mental sides are tough there. Yeah. Oh, he went deep on that yeah, one. And recovered it. That was super deep. Cracking squat. I don't think the referees had much to argue with on depth <laughs> on that one. No. Did check though. And and it worked for him. You know. I did wait until the lights yeah. came on, just, yeah, just I'm in not, case. I'm not saying anything anymore. <laughs> it's a uh, good shot there. You can see just how tight that is around the sleeve there. to work hard for it but I think he might have it yeah, I think he's got that he was chasing it a little bit with that left arm wasn't he yeah, he gets it on the board though Ryan Stin is oh. Opened at 260. Looked good. Because real men wear pink. <laughs> and when you're uh, 120 plus, Lister, you can wear anything you want, really. Yeah. No one's going to argue with him about that. Good bench as well. Yeah. Three on the wall, three white lights. Ryan Stin, who has been absolutely outstanding. He gave us a squat clinic earlier. Looks like 277 and a half. Well, the big man from Germany. And, of course, the great Dietmar Wolf in his corner. Great coach, been in powerlifting for a very, very long time, and an absolute wealth of knowledge. Oh, very clean. That was smooth all the way through. So he chased it back to the rack. Yeah, it was very to well keep done. Keep it moving. So that just so you say when he starts to slow. If you can just keep the trajectory going back to the right without going too far, the bar will keep rising. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I, I talk to athletes about is it's, you know, it's, it's easy to push something up a hill than it is to push it straight up. Yeah. So really taking those conservative jumps, making sure he adds to that total. There's not much point in opening with a 330 and then not adding anything to it. Here he comes, Tobias. Yeah. Very good opener. Yeah, very, very good. Three white lights, no problems at all with that one. Now, Julian Johansson, we said he had a big deadlift for Iron Nerlin. The Lico makers of the greatest plates in the world and the greatest waffle irons.
and you can hear the Germans in the crowd. I don't think he's got anything to worry about with this lift. Big smile at the top <laughs> there. No problem with that one. Three seven zero on the board. Carnival off now with three eighty. It's a fairly decent sized jump, but yeah. Avias three seventy two and a half. Always love, I always love being a coach at the back for the third round of deadlifts and see all the coaches hanging around the change table <laughs> with four different pieces of paper written in case if they do that, I'm putting this one in. I've got this one in case that happens. <laughs> well, you've got to go through every scenario, haven't you? Be prepared. Well, 372 and a half. He's currently in the bronze position. This will pull him into silver. So I think, regardless, he definitely goes home with a medal. Yeah. Well, whether it be a silver or a bronze. So he's heavier than Campos, so if he misses this, she has it not. never looked in doubt, did it? Yeah, don't stand there too long with the bar. <laughs> he had a bit of a nosebleed at the top of that deadlift as well. Yeah. Nice to see. And it happens every now and then. <laughs> Dietmar's pretty happy with that, Paul. So, Carnivalis. Carnival off from Russia. World total record pull. And of course, 